Okay, okay it's on. <laughs> All right, good morning. All right, so uh, let's only go over a couple of things. I'm going to bring up the, this for uh, the Yelp again because I went in and I actually put my own Yelp review in. If, you got, if anybody's gone in, probably, probably not, but um, I put my own Yelp review in for Calca and it worked. You know, how long will it stick? It's been there for like over a week now. Um, five star review. That's the only review we've gotten since I've asked everyone to try to get reviews. Not one. Not one from a customer, from a friend, from anybody. It takes five good reviews, five star reviews, five five star reviews to make up one bad one. To basically start, you know, yeah. making a change. So we need probably like 25 to 30 reviews to get ourselves to that four star and above from the three and a half to right now. So, you know, the, the thing that I want to kind of mention about this is you guys have to think of this right now. We're all working here, so we have to look at it as our own company. If this was your own company and your reputation depended on getting work, wouldn't you do something to make that happen? That's what we have to do. This is what we have to do to make that happen. We have to get Yelp reviews. We have to get over that four point, four point stars. Um, we need it. So I need everybody to focus their energies on this and let's get a couple each. I mean, you guys all said that we could get a couple a week. You know, we've gotten zero. Okay. Doesn't mean you guys can't have your friends, your sisters, your wives, customers put something in too if they've had any work done from us at all ever. Have them put a review in. Okay. Come on, Jay. Um, and family. So, I, I mean, I don't want to beat this dead horse, but we need, the, we need you guys' help. And we have enough people here, we can get this done. We just all have to contribute. Um, HIS license. There's a few of you guys still don't have your HIS license. And so, Jay and, and Jesse, I need to give you guys the application to get your HIS license. Oscar. You guys still have a little bit of time, but I'm sorry, Oscar, you say it just says Jesse on your shirt. Sorry, I just looked at that real quick. So, um, I need you guys to do that. And... Um, I'll give you applications, um, and I told you guys what's going to happen. So you know, when it comes, when you get, come in in the morning um, in your next schedule, and you don't have anything on your on your board, and you're like, "Well, I don't have any jobs today." No, you're not going to have any jobs. I'm going to give them to everybody else first. You're going to be the last one to get a job if you don't get this turned in. I have to have it. Okay. Uh, okay, I want to go over some, something else that um, just briefly about expectations to customers um, you know I had there's a couple of different situations I want to talk about but one of them is you know a customer calls me yesterday and and explains to me that they're really disappointed in the fact that we told them it would take X amount of time to get the job done we said four to five days and now we're two weeks into the job so you know I'm saying this because I understand stuff happens and things can take longer than we expect, but I'd rather under promise and over deliver than to do it the other way around and say, hey, we're going to, you're going to get the best job done and we're going to be out of here in two days and, you know, we don't want to over promise and then under deliver. It takes us, you know, three weeks. It's, it's just not the way to do business. Um, it's a big job, $30,000 job, so obviously we want to make this customer happy, we want to get referrals, let them know how good we did and everything else. I mean, the guy was happy with the people working and happy with the guys, the nice people, just the expectations. You know, he's got two toddlers running around at home with his wife, stay-at-home mom, and the house is, you know, torn apart. You gotta watch the kids more than ever because you got all this stuff going on in the house. Um, basically, we're just not meeting the ex expectations as far as the time and, and getting things done that the way they were told. So, you know, I can't say enough how important it is for us to under-promise and over-deliver. Um, that's just the way, <clears throat> way we have to do it, guys. The other part of it is, the other thing I want to bring up regarding customers is, you know, we, we have a lot of repeat customers here. I mean, I, I see it every day. Um, and we have to show value in everything we do. We have a customer, I had a call yesterday, she was, and basically, you know, Kevin called me because uh, Christian's dad, I think, is, <clears throat> who know, knew this person, maybe referred us to it, uh, a lady. 
Yeah. And <clears throat> um, we did some work out there, and then we did some more work, and we did some more work, and just we just kept on going. And her her prop her, she basically complained and said, hey, you know, she's going to look for another plumber because we um, we seem to be just overpriced, and every time we come out, we're looking for something new to sell her, and it's just another five hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, nonstop, nonstop. Now, granted, when I talked to her on the phone, you can tell she's just wanting to break on something because she's decided, okay, well, I ha she had a faucet issue first. We go and fix the faucet. Then she decides to do a remodel. We have to take the faucet out <laughs> and then put it back in. And you were charging her every time for this, which, of course, why wouldn't we? That's We're here to make business. We're not here, I mean, to make money. We're not here just to do work for free. But she doesn't see any value in that type of work when we're just taking something out putting it back in there's really no value there so i guess what i'm trying to say is anything we do we have to show value and explain make sure the customer understands why we're charging what we're charging um but the, because because the part that kind of really tweaked it a little bit she never got an invoice for the last two jobs that she did she never she goes i never even saw what i was paying there was no kind of breakdown meaning how much did i pay for the for this, for that, for that. And I'm not saying that we give breakdowns, but at least have an invoice that says, this is the work that I did and how much I'm charging you for it. So that if we do something else, you can kind of compare it. Um, that was kind of one of her complaints. So I sent her the invoices, I explained, you know, and by the way, there's more work there. And of course, you know, we probably are gonna have to give her some kind of a break now because of all the stuff we've done. We're basically putting back some sinks and. I'm not really sure what this com complete scope is going to be, but that's what she's looking to do. And she will get a second bid this time. So I mean, we have to be competitive with the bid because if we're not, then you know we're going to potentially lose this customer. Um, and that's not what we want to do, especially when we're getting referrals from people because we're not going to get any more referrals if their friends call them back up and say, hey, that plumber you referred me to is ripping me off. And you know, they keep charging me more and more and more and more. But one of the complaints that she had, that was part of this whole thing was, you know, well, I had a, when I had the faucet installed, how come no one ever told me that the angle stops needed to be replaced the first time? Because when you guys came back out to change the faucet, now you wanted to sell me these angle stops. Why wasn't that told to me first? So you see now, if, if that would have been mentioned in the beginning, the seed planted at least, hey, these angle stops are old, they're the ball type valve, you know, ball valve type, and they're, they're slightly leaking or whatever, I recommend that you replace these. Then when we went out to do that, she would have said, oh, okay, I, I was told that last time. So we probably, you know what I mean? We kind of shot ourselves in the foot a little bit by just continually adding things. She said that her feeling was, every time you guys come out, you're looking for something new to charge me. So, of course, that's kind of our job. We want to make sure we take care of our customer, but if we did it the first time, if we're being consistent and always everyone doing the same type of process and saying, recommending things, if she chooses not to do it this time, the next guy recommends the same thing next time, it's going to be a little easier to swallow, I think. You know, She says, okay, well, we might as well do it this time. If she didn't get it the first time, maybe we can get it the second time. And we're not finding, trying to find other things that someone else didn't, didn't notice. So I just think it's important to show the customers and give them those options, even if they choose not to do it this time, we all have to be consistent with that. Make sense? Right. You have anything, Kevin? You want to bring up? So on that one, um, that's my bad on that one because I didn't mention to her about the angle stops. I was that was one of those days. I was that's the one. It was my birthday, and um, I had a bunch of stuff going on, and um, we had to drive all the way to get a garbage disposal and a faucet, and it was just like you know we were just. We were just trying to get her taken care of that day, and uh, the idea was that hey, when you guys go back there, you know, let her know she's got to. Um, and and probably that what should have happened was obviously I should have mentioned it then, uh, because then I would have primed her for that. Um, but also I asked that the second visit because we had to go back and finish some things where we needed some parts. Um, and I said at that time, you know, tell the homeowner that Kevin said we need to consider replacing these because you know, I couldn't get those valves to work. I had to, I had to really break.
wrench. Um, and I didn't, I was in a Kelka truck. So I'm doing plumbing out of an A-track truck. You know what that is like? And the nearest store is like seven miles away. You know, I, yeah. and I'm just like, and it's pouring rain outside. And I'm just going, man. And, and you know, I just got my schedule. So that, that's kind of what happened there. But I think, I think you're right. Had I said something then, and just told her, look, I'm in, I'm in an HVAC truck, because we did, we rolled up on her, like, she called me, and I happened to be up the street from her, and I could have easily said, look, I'm in an HVAC truck, I can't get, you have other work here, I can't get to it all right today, I, I just wanted to kind of eliminate the pain for today, she had a leaky spraying faucet sideways on, on her account, so if I had just said that, and then she would have totally understood because I just arrived out of nowhere a half hour after she called me, you know, which is pretty amazing service, right? Just happened to be up the street at the Blue Gold restaurant. Um, uh, having lunch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Sipping martinis. Yeah. Yeah. So, on down there. Yeah, so anyway. Um, so I think, I think you're right, just, just communicating that to her, and that would have built the value because she would have been, dang, you know, you guys are hustling for me, yada, yada. It would have been a totally different perspective had I just said that one thing differently. You know, so I, I think that's how sensitive all of this is. You know, you really, you know, it was just one little thing, you know. And, and, um, and I think she would have been far more appreciative of the services that we provided, but... I mean, we hustled for her that day, too. I mean, we got her a faucet. You know, we picked one out for her, sent her pictures of it, yay or nay, you know. Um, matched it to her counter. She absolutely loved the faucet. I mean, you know, I thought I did everything right. But that one little thing, you know, so. I mean, at, at this point, she's happy. She, she still wants to use this. She wants us to go out and give her the bid. Um, there's still stuff that has to be put back, I guess. She still wants that. And I told her, you know, once once the guy went out, and I, basically Nick's going to go out and do that estimate, um, you know, that I would take a look at it, and we, we would take care of her and give her you know, some kind of a discount to just kind of make up for all the stuff that we're doing. And, you know, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we'll see what it what it comes out to. So she appreciated me calling her. Um, and other than that, she said she liked all of our guys. You know, all of our people were great, so on and so on. Um, the other part of that that I wanted to bring up is when you have – an apprentice or a helper helping you. So at this point, James was out there with Nick. She needs to understand when you're in, one of the things she mentioned is, you know, they were in and out of here in two hours um, doing the angle stops and stuff you guys did. She didn't realize both of you were working. She didn't know if both of you were working or if you were just learning, whatever. Another thing that might be helpful because mm -hmm. when you pay 700 bucks for two hours work, She's saying the parts couldn't have been that much. I was looking those up online, and they didn't seem like they were that expensive, but she said they were only here for two hours. So but when I brought up the fact that there was two guys there doing work, and I said, she goes, well, I'm not going to pay for one guy to stand around and learn. And I said, well, ma'am, I talked to the guys, and they both were doing work the entire time. Um, she goes, okay, well, that makes a little more sense. So... Building the value when you're talking to the customer, there's two of us here, he's going to do some things, I'm going to do other things. Just giving a mention that you guys are both working, you know, so you're, we're going to get this done a little faster than what we normally would do. Because one guy might not take quite twice as long, but could, you know, could easily take more than two hours. So that's, that's the point, is just communicating to the customer when you have a second person there. Because if they see you there, you have two guys there, and you're in, you're in and out in an hour, and you're charging them three, four, five, six hundred bucks. You know, they they have to understand the reason why you're in and out so quickly is because there's two of us here, and he's going to work on this while I work on that, or she's going to work on this while I work on that. So that part of it, because she didn't stand there and obviously watch over you guys the entire time, I can't imagine, right? Actually, did she? Did she? Did she? Yeah. yeah, we were both underneath each other. So, so you know, yeah. so I mean, I kind of explained to her, and I said I talked to the guys, and, and they both were working, and you know, so she said, okay, well, and, and maybe she was looking for a discount, and that could be it. But at the same time, just that little bit of extra communication, making sure she understands why she's being charged for what she's being charged, that would be helpful. So, that goes so far too with the customer laying out the scope of the work, you know because it's just like if you take your car and you get the tires rotated and they end up doing a bunch of other crap to your car and you get this bill 
<coughs> you weren't aware of the scope. And that brings me into, as a channel leader, approaching to be a channel leader, I should say, um, you know, I want to make sure that the scope is explained fully to the customers, you know, because if you're a customer and you can imagine you're d dropping money out of your own pocket to get something fixed, but you're not sure what's really it's going to, that's really frustrating. A lot of people do that. A lot of companies do that. Yeah, I think it is. instills confidence, you know, and it's better to be over, like, you know, we, we may be here longer or we may be here shorter, but, you know, at least we're laying it out, laying the foundation, because what I see is there's a lot of fire drills going on, and you guys are getting in the middle of it, the workers, the technicians and stuff, and that's where I hope I can come in and, and kind of help out, you know, um, on the channel leader part, so make sure you keep me in the loop. I, w I went to a job with Renars the other day, and I showed up right after he he was there to try to sell, and he was already selling the customer stuff. So I looked like a total asshole showing up, <laughs> you know. I'm like, what the hell, Renard? You're supposed to wait for me, dude. I didn't say that to him in front of him, but I was like, I get there. He's already, and he's trying to hurry up before I got up to the conversation, like he's trying to close something, you know. And I was like, okay, so this, is the, the, <laughs> this isn't going to happen anymore. So just keep me in the loop, HVC. HVAC guys, so you guys can be freed up to do what you guys do best and let me do what I can do for the company, you know, on that side. What do you want to say that? <clears throat> oh, that particular call, I actually kind of lost what I was going to say. <laughs> that particular call. <laughs> 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 that particular it's not like, okay, so it's not like I said, out of a total after we were done, she knew very much so that slow was going to be before we even started. Mm -hmm. uh, and we both did work already. Each sink, and then when it came, he was done with his because it was a smaller sink and less stuff to do. It came to me, and he were draining stuff, doing. It. So we were working all the time. It wasn't even nonstop. I mean, get take apart two sinks, go get parts, right? Angle stops, and it'd be all done in two hours. Disconnect everything, capped off, safe. In two hours, definitely because there was two guys there, not just because you know he was sitting there just hanging out, you know, yeah, watching. You guys were yeah. Yeah, you I mean, know, we were getting yeah. it done, like you know? around. <laughs> so, and she was standing there at the, you know, the edge of the counter the whole time, seeing us both hustle, so. Yeah, well, and then Christian's dad was there, you know, pitching stuff, too, so I think she just stressed out about money, and yeah. like, trying to get, that's my personal thing. Yeah, and, and that's fine, yeah. just, just make sure we communicate, that's all I'm right. saying, just, I'd rather have a little bit of over-communication than, than, you know, than less. Mm. Uh, and, and, and if we all do it consistently, then and you know you drop the seed the first time that this needs to be done or that needs to be done, um, and we all make mistakes. It's not the end of the world, but we got to learn from them. Hopefully, that's the plan. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Our branding is amazing. It's Kevin is our brand. Everywhere I go, yeah. I'm talking to people, yeah. and oh yeah, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin is our brand. It doesn't matter if we sell Ream or Standard or yeah. Train or anything. It's, it's like Kevin. Kevin. So Kevin. you can't Kevin get yeah. you, you can't get a better situation yeah. under you know as an employee. We just We'll, we'll do you know, it's, it's a good job. Yeah. Yeah. It helps to have that. Well, you know. So let's get some help. Make then. equipment labels that you Kevin can change them over. <laughs> we'll just change it to a Kevin. I work for a. We have an AC Pro, a Maytag, and a Kevin. <laughs> and here's a Kevin, two, second gen, third gen. <laughs> I worked for a Fortune 500 company, Stanley Tools, for 28 years, and we used to just sit back and get orders because of the, the name. Yeah. You know, we had a NASCAR and Stanley tape measures, or everybody's got one of those, so we just sit back and take orders, you know. And now I come into a smaller organization and we have the same branding with Kevin. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And the niche that you've dug out, the area, is just like gold. I mean, crime and sakes, who wouldn't want to walk, drive to work and see the Pacific Ocean every day? Mm -hmm. I mean, crime and sakes, you know, it's pretty cool. Anything else? Yeah, it's, it's All right, so the HVAC guys are going to be busy, and my room's going to be going over there. Um, I'm talking about 
maybe James and Ryan working together today to get the things that we Nick. need to get done. James I'm sorry, Nick. Nick, James and Nick, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We look a long You guys look, yeah. Yeah, you look so much alike. <laughs> and Oscar, don't point. be falling through any rubs, okay? Uh, come on now. He's not allowed in the attic on this job anymore. <laughs> I, I talked to Jeff yesterday. The, Jeff called me last night, the guy. Right. Yeah, and um, Kevin talked to him. I talked to him. You talked to him. Yeah, I didn't talk to him. I talked to Gabriel. Yeah, oh, yeah. and Gabriel says, "Oh yeah, your guy almost fell through the damn roof." I said, "I said what?" He goes, "Oh yeah, just one step, you know." And I says, "Well, I, I didn't hear about that, but um, glad he's okay. Yeah, How's everything going?" And he said, "Jeff said, well, you know, we just I just need some attention, you know." And I think Kevin came out and he talked to Alan. I had returned his call in the morning. And I got his voicemail, and then he didn't call me till like 4:30. He was returning my call, so it wasn't okay. like he was undermining you guys. He just was re returning my call, right, right? Because I was following up with him. You know, yeah, I do follow good. up, by the way, with all the customers after the fact, mm -hmm. and get a happy yay or nay type feeling for him. You know, yeah. and let him know that you know if there's any other issues or you know projects, please feel free to call us. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I am doing it's that. especially good. Not only after, well, especially after, but even during. How are things going? Is everything okay? Do you have any concerns? Uh, especially on these bigger projects that are going to take us from um, Just the fact that, because what people are used to, they're used to people going out, selling something, and disappearing. Walking away. Yeah, and you never hear from that person. You yeah, never see that person. Again. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that salespeople make. Because the reality is, if you, if you continue that chain, you, learn, you don't break that chain. You learn to get all over your head. You might be. And then what happens is, is when you go in after the fact, there's yeah, it's about hundred dollars. They're not expecting that. Right. Hey, I want to come out there and I want to look at the job. I want. Yeah, you might not know anything about HVAC, but they don't know that. And you're just going out there to make sure that they're happy, right? And they know that. Yeah. And they're thinking to themselves, yeah, that's really good service. They're following up. They actually, you know, there's an end, you know, an end game to this. Oh yeah. And then at that point. You know what happens? It's really weird because at that point, you know what? That's when they open up and say, hey, by the way, um, I have a brother, I have a sister, I have a mother, yeah. I have a neighbor, you know, and, and, that's and because they feel that level of confidence with you, and a lot of times that's all it takes. Yeah. And then you'd be, or I have, you know what, do you do this? I have this additional project, you know, and that's when uh, it's magic, you know, and it's, it's, it's just that, that, extra push it doesn't take much more you've already done all the heavy lifting it actually right? takes away the dollar sign in front of the work to be done yeah it does yeah it it, does. because it's it now that's not an issue right it, it's you know this guy is good and we do what we say we're gonna do and he called me back three weeks later I was shocked yeah you know or two weeks or a week later it was shocked like I got a call from a guy that sold me a car a month later I was like are you shitting me you're calling me to thank me for buying a car from you? Car salesman? God. So, guess who gets all my referrals to car salesman? <laughs> right. yeah. 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 It matters, though. It matters. It made yeah. me feel good. I was like, oh, it, it does. That's exactly <laughs> the thing that you're going for, is you're yeah. going to make the customer feel good. Yeah. And and the minute you make the customer feel good, then it's just it's the trust is so there. easy from that point on. And that's the difference with certain texts too. Just I want to fill that out because that makes a lot of sense. And I know that certain texts just think about the dollar. And if you come across as thinking about just the dollar to a customer, and then you leave them alone, they're never going to call you again. Yeah, they can see right, right they're going to call that. you again. They they can feel it. They can you know if you treat, treat them like a person that they matter and that they're the most important thing. Whatever the problem is, you're going to fix it for them. And then you follow up and you show that you care. Now you're a person rather than just a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. You don't want to look like a dollar sign. In front you don't want to pull out your iPad in front of the customer and start calculating your commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I, like I have seen, by the way. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not gonna make any money on this job. Maybe we, yeah. Yeah, oh, and oh, like, uh, <laughs> no. don't think that's in the plan, guys, to do that. But you know. Don't do it. <laughs> you always come from the same place about caring about the individual and their personal problems that they're, they're experiencing in their home, where your area of expertise is. If you're always coming in from that perspective, 
without regard to how much money am I like making or it's taking too long or it's going to be too difficult or you know how am I going to do this any of that you just come from that perspective about caring for them it, it just you don't the money just comes it just comes yeah. and, 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 and it's not even like you, you just quit thinking about your stupid commission because you know? really it's for me it's just an obstacle you know? I, don't, I, I don't think about it you think about it, you get all this stress, and then you're like yeah. bringing that to the sale mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then there's Let smart people it, out there too in. that can read that. They can read it, right? Just They're like that lady you. that, you know, I'm paying for two guys, you know, and yeah. not knowing that both of them are working. Right. But they're watching. They're watching, right? They're know, watching everyone's moves. Their mind's and thinking acting. in the back. She's a business mm -hmm. owner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. they add two and two together, you know, yeah. basically. You know, and when I talk about adding value, I'm going to throw something else out. Say, for example, you have two guys working a job, and I wasn't at the job. I don't know how it went. You know, I, I kind of heard from Nick already. Quickly. But let's just say, let's just say for an example, here's showing the value. These guys are out there working, and now, so James is in a small little bar sink. He's doing one angle stop and doesn't have as much work to do. He can't get under the same sink that Nick's at when he's doing his job, right? Yeah. Well, so, well, hopefully not. <laughs> you guys might want to get kind of the same sink, but let's not talk about go there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, bottom line is, so now let's say James gets done before before Nick. So there is some time that he's not really, maybe he's cleaning up some tools, doing whatever. That's the prime time to add value by doing something else. Hey, you know, I noticed the light bulb's out, or, you know, this, this cabinet's loose. I'm going to tighten that up for you and let the customer know you're doing it. That's showing value. There's other things you can do, you know, just don't make sure you're not just standing around because then the value is being shown. You're constantly doing something. You're trying to find something else to help the customer with. By, by the way, you're not charging them for It's just, you know, I'm here anyway. You know, I can't get under the sink with Nick. Or I don't want to today, whatever the case is. But I, I want to still, you know, help you out and get done whatever I can get done. So... Sometimes they're bringing in groceries or whatever it is. You bring in their trash cans, but doing something, take out their trash. There's so many little things that, you know, would make a difference to a customer when they see that you're going that extra step. I mowed so. the yard yesterday. You're on? No, I'm teasing. <laughs> well, uh, what is the service champions thing is what is it done for free or something like that? Yeah. It's the same idea. Yeah, it's just, it is. You know, oh, I see you got the trash ready to go out. I'm going out to the truck. Do you mind if I take it out for you? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, they're going to be shocked that you even asked. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, tarping things off. Kevin saw my little setup that I have. Uh, we were talking about mold and closing off hot hot rooms. It's called a zip wall. It costs $120. Mm -hmm. Telescopic poles and some plastic. It comes with two adhesive zippers. You can build a little room around where you're cutting. Yeah. It takes you 10 and minutes. If you take care of it, you can reuse it. <laughs> Where do you get those? Home Depot. Home Depot. Oh, you can reuse it? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can reuse well, it. You can as long as you take care of it, you can reuse it. That same plastic, you just cut it out to a certain dimension and you can use it again and again and again. That's it. And then you look really good when you show yeah. up and build a room around something. Yeah. Keep all the dust in there. Don't stay the night. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't see in the tarp. You walk in with a mattress. <laughs> like, <laughs> Blow up, man. Blow up, man. Alright, guys, just keep going. Let's get to work. Make some money. <laughs>